my ceiling system. Let's take a look at that now. Here's what we got. Last episode, I had dry fit. I cut the boards to length and dry fit them in each of these channels to see how they fit. I can't have them too long or too short. We have expansion and contraction to contend with, but you gotta be able to get these boards in and out easily. They can't fall out either. The other thing is, the reason I did the dry fit with nothing above it just yet, where am I ripping my boards thickness wise? Because I want these seams from board to board to line up as it goes down the lane, okay? So that was another reason to dry fit the whole system. Then they all came down and I did my tongue and groove work. This view is looking directly at one end of a ceiling plank. The first cut uses a double slot cutting bit on the routing table, centered on the thickness of the board. In one pass, this creates the tongue. Now switch to a single slot cutter, realign on center, and cut the groove on the other side of the board. Change your bit once again and cut a slight chamfer on the corner. Flip the board and make another chamfer cut on that corner. Now reposition the cutting blade and cut a chamfer on the other side of the board. Flip it and make your final cut. In all, six cuts are needed on each board and I made 98 boards. Now the boards are all ready to be sanded and painted, and sanded and painted, and sanded and painted. In the meantime, I'm going to show you my ceiling system. See these? This is a ceiling system. I'm off on another tangent. I got to take these out anyway. That's why I mentioned them. Uh, this is acrylic milk glass, sliders, sliding doors. Have any of you ever heard people having problems with their hinges? on these cabinet doors, right? They hinge up and the little arm doesn't work and the, the door hits you, they don't stay up. You gotta bang it, you gotta tighten it. Well, you don't have a problem with sliders. I still have to drill my finger holes and put a nice rubber grommet in there, but you don't have a problem with sliders. They don't break. The only thing they may do is rattle. So I've got a rubber gasket again to put in there and we'll see if we can combat that. But the other nice thing about these is you can easily replace them. If you get tired of the white milk glass, you want gray, you want to change them seasonally, you can do that. But what I did find out in this particular cabinet, this cabinet is for bigger items. The galley cabinet, the sliders are fine because they're a little bit wider, you have more access. This cabinet, you need to get big things in and out. And these sliders and the tracks that come with them limit your access to the cabinet. So I do think I'm gonna put a door, I'm gonna take all the tracking out, and I'm gonna put a door that hinges down. Cabinet door with a nice positive lack latch up here from the marine industry. Nice stainless steel latch, one move. You're not pushing a button then pulling the door open. This is one move, you get your finger under it, you unlock and open it one time. Now you remember my cabinet back uh, from the uh, Humble Road Think Tank. Um, I'm going with this stuff. This is the best way to go. When you get it to a certain length with a certain tension, it sets in there real nice, like it was a plywood wall. One thing I figured out is the best way to do these walls is to have them in two pieces. This cabinet will have two backer walls that meet in the middle with a little bit of overlap. If I had one continuous backer piece up here, it would be too cumbersome to handle. See? So that's what I'm going to do. There'll be two pieces in there with a slight overlap in the center. So you can take out one side or the other or both. So here is now my uh, ceiling system. It starts, let's get this heavy mass vinyl to behave for us. There we go. Here's what we have up there. Uh, I ripped, not I planed, I planed my boards to a thickness or a thinness, as it were, to allow me enough depth in this channel for my three pieces of insulation. You don't want to compress insulate because then it defeats the purpose. It works with the air within it, within the fibers to insulate, to do its job. So the way the system works is right up against the van 
sealing is my thin sealate. That goes in first. Then reflectix right underneath it. I'm not using the reflectix as an insulator that, that would require air in front of it or behind it, but yet there would be some air space in there. This is primarily to do what it's, what I intended to do is reflect. This is going to reflect the hot sun in the summer back up out of the roof. The Thinsulate slows the transfer of the heat. Then the Reflectix will reflect it back out of the ceiling. It also would reflect the heat or the cool back down inside the van. So it serves double duty. Then the next layer is my heavy mass vinyl. The heavy mass vinyl is the vapor barrier, a sound barrier, and it has insulative qualities. The other thing it does is it helps to keep my boards quiet. This piece is cut a little bit too big for this gap, so I have to fight it a little bit to get it back in. It's nice though, it's a nice batting system. All the systems in the van work with each other. They each need one another to survive. Just like these tongue and groove boards. Every one of these boards is connected to the one next to it. So they assist one another in support, movement, rattle. Now this system, I've got just enough compression in this system to, and the weight of the mass vinyl to keep these boards in line. Now, yeah, if you go over big potholes or bumps, whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, I think it's going to be okay. I don't have my rubber gasket in yet. These boards are sitting on the bare metal. There will be a rubber gasket between the metal and the board, so we'll see. It's this is a concept that I have to I have to test it. I'll get everything in place and then I'll take it to Florida in January and that's going to be a big test run for all the systems. So we'll see how it works. Here's another problem. Right now I have the heavy mass vinyl coming all the way down in one piece all the way down the back to the bottom of the cabinet. So it's like one big umbrella system right down to the back. The other option in doing that would be to cut the mass vinyl where the ceiling meets the wall and then continue, pick it up on the back of my cabinet backer. So you still have your envelope, your umbrella of coverage but rather than having that mass vinyl in one piece, you'd have it with an overlap, two pieces that overlap. I'm inclined to go that way because the whole point of the system is to have easy access to be able to work. This does not afford you very easy access, so I don't see it being an advantage over the two-piece system. What do you think?